Joseph Adamo. Hello, mate. Oh, Tez, mate. <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to say that we're back. I won't say no. that we're back. But no, uh, no. Mate, no. you and I were chatting throughout the game. Application, no. ability to transition mentally from offensive-minded to defensive-minded and not let them run it in in the way they wanted to, and, and they applied themselves today. Corridor was slammed shut all game. That's what you yep. call a response. Like, they obviously – they weren't bullshitting when they said they reviewed last week's game because you could see the changes. And, yeah, you know what? We'll put the Constitution aside, put – Put what the board of directors aside just for just for a couple of hours. Like let's just fuck. Let's just enjoy that. That was nice. Yes. Like that's that's winning. That's what winning feels like. It's what a very easy win feels like as well. I was, I can't remember the last time I was that calm watching a game of football. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, there was a little bit of a heartbeat in the fourth. And I thought, hang on, no, surely not. But well, for you're me, right. That was, and I know a lot of people are saying, you know, we can't slack off. You can't sleep. For me. That happens when you play without a ruck all game and your midfield's going hammer and tong and they've laid 74 tackles to three-quarter time. Like, all right, I'll, I'll, give them, I'll give them a little bit of a spell for that last 10, 15, whatever we saw, because they were spent. They were absolutely spent. And, uh, you know, we used three quarters, three and a half quarters to set up a really good win. Um, the boys should take a lot from that. For me, you said it yourself today, Tez. Teague... <laughs> Hasn't had a real crack at coaching uh, a healthy, fully functioning Carlton list. Whether his papers are stamped or not doesn't change my opinion on the guy. Doesn't change my opinion on the fact that the ink has barely dried on his coaching contract to begin with 18 months in. Um, Because you can see that it's all there. You can see that it's working. You can see it in patches. Tonight we put it together for pretty much full court, full, sorry, four quarters. I don't know. My, my stance doesn't change. It, it, it doesn't. And and I know I know it's week to week and you can you can point the finger and go, yeah, but what about last week? You don't forget last week. You don't. But if a team, if you want to talk about a team checking out on their coach, they wouldn't have shown up tonight. They, they, would, have, they would have laid down. They would have taken the easy way out. It would have been a 24-point loss, as we've seen for the rest of the year. So dance doesn't change on that one. And speaking about weedering, it was an interesting point. And linking that to Teague, I messaged you, I think, in the first quarter. They swung Jones onto King straight away. Now, mm. I don't know if that was player-driven. I don't know if Jones put his hand up and said, Weeders, you play intercept tonight. But for me, that's a coaching change. You see that in games very, very often from other teams. And we haven't seen it very often from Teague. For me, you've got to give him credit. Switch. You could see the mismatch with Weeders. could see that, he, that King was getting him done. Halfway through the first... Jones never left his man once he was swung onto King. So, I don't know. A few things I take away from it. Very happy. Very relaxed. Have a good sleep. Good weekend. It's nice. Next Saturday, it's the Gold Coast Suns. Um, what are we doing next week? Are we uh, are we keeping the team as it is? I mean, you want, if you want to point out Lockie O'Brien and, and Willow and these types, remember these guys are fighting for their lives, right? So, they're going to be playing out of their skin for the next few weeks. I... I'd give them another crack. You know, they, they've earned another crack for sure. Um, you know, for me, I think if there's a spot for Brody Kemp, it's time to see Brody Kemp for, for the last few games. I'd love to see that. And for me, for the rest of the season, Tez, it's wins. Four, it's, it's three more wins. Yep. Yeah. Thank if, we square the, if we square the ledger at 11-11, someone tell me the last time we'd won eight games in a season, let alone 11. Please, someone, someone tell me. Like, yeah, right. you, you can tell what you want about this season. Wasted season, should have played finals, but... Keep it in perspective. This club's come from a fucking long way back. Uh, we can all we can all attest to that. We can all attest to the shit that we've seen over the years. And um, you know, if you can square the ledger at eleven eleven, for me, that's that's as as good a season almost as what you could have asked for. Yeah, almost. No. Well said, mate. As always, well said. Uh, almost Blues Brothers this week. It's going to be a nice pod to listen to Tuesday morning. I'm not sure what happened on iTunes or Apple Podcasts this week. I have no idea, but hopefully back and running. For those of you who don't know, I don't know where you've been if you don't know who Joe is, but Joe hosts the Almost Blues Brothers podcast. Um, and uh, it's just flying, mate. Absolutely flying. Oh, stop. It's not. We're, uh, we, we do our best. It's a bit of a laugh. Um, yes, 6 a.m. Tuesday morning, that'll be up. Um, happy pod. 
Reese and Dan, I think Reese has had a few uh, cordials tonight, so uh, he hasn't really been too, too uh, sort of. Uh, yeah, I haven't really been able to understand what he's saying over text. Uh, hey, let so. him enjoy it. It's going to be a good weekend. <laughs> he can have that. He can have that. Yeah. All right, brother. Take it easy, mate.